We are on the record at 9.06. Today is July 17, 2020. This is a video deposition of Timothy James in the matter of Myra Martinez versus Sheriff Mike Williams et al. Would counsel please identify themselves for the record and the court report will swear in the witness. Kirby Johnson on behalf of the plaintiff, Myra Martinez. Paul Darajati on behalf of Officer Borshade. Steve Powell for the city of Jacksonville. Sean Granite for Officers Vickery, Chastain, and Andres. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, would you please state your full name for the record, please? Uh, my name is Timothy James. Mr. James, have you ever had your deposition taken before? Yes, sir. Okay, how many times? Um, for Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, countless times, probably over a dozen. I couldn't tell you the exact amount, sir. Okay. When's the last time you had your deposition taken? Probably two years ago, sir. Okay. Since it's been a couple of years, I'll just go over some, some of the ground rules with you again. Um, Everything that we say here is being typed down uh, by the court reporter. She's very good at what she does, and she can type extremely fast. One thing she can't do is type when two people are talking at the same time. Sometime in the course of normal conversation, you may know where my question is going, and it's just natural for you to answer before the question has been completed. I, however, because it's all been, being written down, I just ask that you let me completely finish my question before you provide your answer, and I'll try to let you complete your answer before I ask my next question. Does that sound fair? Yes, sir. Thank you. You've done a good job giving verbal <coughs> answers. Um, again, that just makes it easier for the court reporter as opposed to shakes of the heads or nods or uh -huh's or uh -huh's. So if you would just continue to give verbal responses, that would be great. If at any point in time I ask you a question that you don't understand, um, feel free to ask me to rephrase it and I'll certainly do my best to do that. And if at any point in time you need to take a break, just ask me so long as there's not a question pending, we can make that happen. Yes, sir. Okay, very good. To start with some general background information, Mr. James. What is your date of birth? 11-17-1978. Are you married? Yes, sir. Okay. Do you have children? Yes, sir. Okay. How many? Uh, five. Okay. Do you currently live in Jacksonville? Yes, sir. How long have you lived in Jacksonville? Uh, approximately 20 years. So if you were born on November 17, 1978, how old does that make you now? 41. Thank you. Where did you live prior to moving to Jacksonville? Uh, I was in the United States military, so my previous duty station was Norfolk, Virginia. Go through some of your educational history here. Did you graduate from high school? Yes, sir. Where did you graduate from high school? Jefferson Senior High School, Alexandria, Minnesota. And what year did you graduate? 1997. Did you go to college? Yes, sir. Where did you go to college? Uh, let's see, it's changed names already. Uh, Jack, Florida State College of Jacksonville. I have to see, Jim. Forget it's been a while. When you went there, was it FCCJ? Yes, sir. Okay. And how long, how, how long did you go to FCCJ? Uh, two years, sir. Did you get the, a degree? Uh, I have enough credits for my associates. I never applied for it. Okay. Did you... Have you undergone any vocational or, or special training courses? I went to the um, police academy. Okay. When did you go to the police academy? Uh, 2013. Okay. So I'm going to back up a little bit. You graduate high school in, in 1997. What do you do after you graduate from high school? I joined the military. Okay, and how long were you in the military? Uh, eight years. Okay. 
So you got out of the military, was it 2005? 2006, sir. 2006, okay. What did you do when you got out of the military? Uh, I started going to college, um, and that was about it. Okay. Worked uh, odd jobs. Okay. You worked odd jobs while you were going, while you yes, were sir. in college? Yes, sir. Okay. So, did you leave FCCJ in about 2008? Roughly about that time, I, believe, I would guess so. Okay. What did you do when you graduated, or when you left FCCJ? I was a personal trainer. And how long did you do personal training? Roughly five years. Following your personal training, is that when you went to the police academy? Yes, sir. Okay. you tell me a little bit about the process? Um, did you apply to be a, a police officer prior to going to the academy? What does that mean, sir? Okay. So you went to the police academy. Did you... How does, how does that process work? Do you pay to go to the police academy? Or yes, sir. I was, I was a paid, I apologize. I was a paid, uh, paid student there. You were, you were getting paid to go to school there? No, I was not getting paid. I was paying to go to the academy, yes, sir. Thank you. And who, what school was this police academy through? FSC Jason. Okay. And that was about in 2013, you said? It was 2013, yes, sir. Okay, and how long did the police academy at FSCJ last? Uh, basic law enforcement course was six months. At some point, did you become employed with the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office? Yes, sir. What year was that? January 2014. Was the police academy a prerequisite for you to be hired by Jacksonville Sheriff's Office? Yes, sir. Okay. How does it work with the Florida Department of, of Law Enforcement? Do they have a requirement that you go to the police academy as well? As far as I know, yes, sir. Was it a, the same basic law enforcement class that was required for you to apply at JSO? Yes, sir. So after you graduate the police academy, you, the, you then applied to JSO? Yes, sir. In the hiring process, were you interviewed prior to becoming an officer? Yes, sir. Okay. What did the hiring process include? Um, a stress test, a psychological examination, um, a medical examination, an oral board. I'm trying to remember if I'm forgetting anything. I, I believe that was it. Okay. You say an oral board? Yes, sir. What is what is an oral board? Uh, you sit in front of a council of, I think, five. There's three to five. I can't remember the exact number. Uh, officers, they ask you questions about your background. They ask you questions about being a police officer. Um, and then they also give you hypothetical situations. How would you handle things? Okay. Did you ever take any training... <clears throat> specifically as it relates to the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office? Not until I was hired. Okay. As part of your hiring process, did you have to go through a background check? Yes, sir. Okay, what did the background check consist of? Um, as far as I know, criminal investigation. They checked you out and make sure you, you're not a felon. Um, you don't have any history of, um, I guess psychological issues. They checked your driving history. I, I was not on that board, so I don't know exactly what it entails. But to my knowledge, that's what's on it. Yes, sir. Prior to your employment with JSO, did you have any criminal history? Nothing major, sir. No. Okay. Driving, driving tickets, things of that nature. Okay. Any criminal driving? Uh, no, issues. No, uh, any psychological pro uh, issues? That no, sir. Okay. 
how long after you were hired with JSO did you undergo JSO training? Um, I was hired in January of 2014 and we started training I believe the 24th or 27th of that month. Can you generally describe the training process that you went underwent? Um, as far as for the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office? Yes, specific? sir. Uh, we went over general orders, um, operational orders, learning the policies of the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, did a refresher of defensive tactics, a refresher of um, firearms training uh, for anybody who had not been to those courses recently. Uh, driving refresher and sir I can't, it's been a while so that's about as general as I can get you. Very good. Yes sir. So and I'm, and I'm, I apologize but I missed the second thing. You, you started with general orders and the second thing that Operational you orders. Operational orders. What is the, as you understand it, what is the difference between a general order and an operational order? General orders, as it sounds, it's something general. Um, operational orders are specific to operations of the day-to-day -day Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. But do you recall going through uh, any use of force training? There's... Uh, at least two weeks of uh, defensive tactics. Um, there was two weeks of legal, um, patrol specific, and I, I believe it was t it was covered in all those as well as um, there's specific blocks of instruction during our general orders training and operational orders training that has um, use of force in it. Okay. Were you trained on what to do following a use of force incident? Yes, sir. Okay. Tell me about tell me about that. Did they tell you how to when it, when it was necessary to to write reports following use of force incidents, things like that? Any sort of use of force, you should. As far as I'm aware, sir, I'm gonna have to give you the best of my knowledge from years past because I haven't been a police officer for two years now. Um, that if there's a use of force, um, you're supposed to write a response to resistance report. So, detailing what you what you did, why you did it, and um, the the outcome. So. And is that as to, as as you understand it, mm -hmm. is that only if you were the the officer that was engaged in the use of force, or what if you witnessed a use of? There force? is a witness uh, response to resistance report. Okay. If you if you were privy to the actual use of force, okay. so if you witnessed a use of force, as you understand it, mm -hmm. you you were required to write a witness report. It would depend on the situation, but generally, yes, sir. Okay. I think you touched on this, but the, is there a <clears throat> is there a code of conduct um, that JSO has? Yes, sir. Okay. Was that taught to you in the in the training process? Yes, sir. Okay. Would that be part of the the general orders? I would not know if it's general or op orders. Yes, sir. But there, it was it was somewhere in the orders. Yes, sir. Okay. <coughs> and how long did the training last? Um, it was, I believe, six more months of training. There's um, field. Uh, Field training in class. There was orientation, which covered um, the general orders, op orders, all that kind of thing that I touched on earlier, and the on the street field training. And I believe that was, like I said, roughly six more six months of additional training. Okay. So, what was what was the field training? Um, what did that consist of? Uh, you rode with another officer for a period of time. Generally it was three work cycles. Um, you observed, you handled calls, and you was on the job training. Do you remember who your field training officer was? Uh, I had three of them. Um, it was uh, Officer Randolph, and I 
can't remember his first name, uh, Officer Stevens, who's now Sergeant Stevens, and I can't remember my third training off, field training officer, sir. Okay. After you completed your training, were you then a police officer? Yes. Sir. Okay. Once you graduated field training. Okay. Were you were you assigned to a specific zone? Yes, sir. What zone was that? Zone three. Okay. And it's my understanding that police officer were you were you a patrol patrolman? Yes, sir. And just explain to me generally what some of the duties of a patrol patrolman were. Um, that's anything from uh, traffic stops, um, calls for service to include anything from uh, burglary, robbery, um, you know, disorderly you know conduct, um, disturbing the peace, disorderly intox. It could be just about anything, sir. Okay. Basically, the first people to touch on any case, any call for service. Okay. Were you <coughs> given a, a police cruiser? Yes, sir. Okay. And just explain, just if you could, in layman's terms, just describe how a, how a normal day as a patrolman would go for you. That's pretty broad. It, it certainly is. Um, we, I'll, I'll try to be more specific. Yeah. It, it could it could be anything. Okay. Would, it, would, would most of your days consist of you being in your police cruiser and responding to calls that come in over the radio? That would be a good, a good generalization, yes, sir. Okay. And the calls that come in over the radio, do those have a specific name? Just calls for service, sir. Um, they could be just about anything. Are those CAD calls? Or are those? Yes, sir. So just to kind of complete the process here, you would receive, or who would who would be the one that, that sends these CAD calls to you? Would that be dispatch? Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> How long did you work for Jacksonville Sheriff's Office? Um, until August of 2018. Are you currently employed? Um, with the uh, Air National Guard. And how long have you been employed with the Air National Guard? Uh, just about a year now. Following your uh, employment with JSO, did you work anywhere in between JSO and Air National Guard? I was with uh, Johnson Johnson for roughly three months. What did you do with Johnson & Johnson? I was a fabrication technician, which means we made contact lenses. Why did you stop being a JSO police officer? Uh, I resigned, sir. Why did you resign? Uh, well, I was part of uh, a pretrial intervention. What do you What do you mean by I was part of a pretrial intervention? Um, I was. How do I put this? Um, it was offered by the state uh, state attorney's office that uh, criminal charges would be dropped on a case, and I would resign and not uh, apply for employment as a police officer in the fourth judicial circuit. So at some point in time during your employment with the JSO, were you charged criminally with a, with a crime? Yes, sir. Okay. And what crime was that? Simple battery. And when did this, when did this incident occur? June 2017. Can you just tell me generally what the circumstances were surrounding that incident? I can tell you what they were, what the allegations were, yes, sir. Sure. Uh, the allegations were that uh, that I assaulted, or actually, I'm here, sorry, I battered a uh, suspect.
And at the time that you're alleged to have battered this suspect, were you um, on duty? Yes, sir. And where, where did this alleged battery occur? It was at a gas station uh, in San Marco area. I can't remember the exact gas station. Do you recall the name of the um, alleged victim? No, sir. Is that the only time you've been charged criminally? Yes, sir. Other than the, the criminal charges against you, had you ever uh, been disciplined as a Jacksonville Sheriff's Officer? Yes, sir. How many times? Um, a few. I couldn't, I don't know, sir. I, I don't remember a lot of that. Okay. So. <coughs> More than once? Yes, sir. Have you been disciplined um, based on words that words that you've said? Meaning, sir. Meaning, have you made Facebook posts and gotten disciplined for that? Yes, sir. Can you describe the circumstances around that? Um, I made a few Facebook posts, and they were uh, somebody thought they were offensive. They were brought to attention of my lieutenant. Uh, he, had, he interviewed me per Jacksonville policy and deemed that uh, my posts were a uh, violation of social media policy. Now the social media policy, is that a social media policy of JSO? Yes, sir. Was that ever, how, how was that, were you ever trained on the social media policy? Not directly, sir, no. So that wouldn't have been something that was gone over as part of the general orders or operational orders? I, I, Section of form. Okay. Is that your answer? What's that? I didn't get your answer. No, I, I don't know. Okay. Other than the Facebook posts, have you been disciplined for anything else that you can recall? You can ask me specifically of an incident. I could tell you yes or no. I can't remember a lot of my. I, I don't know how to ask you specifically about an incident if I don't know generally what the incidents yes, were. I can, I can appreciate that. Um, let's see. I was. Um, sir, I can't, I can't remember any incidences. Was there an incident? Was there an incident where somebody else was riding in your police cruiser, and you were not truthful about that? Oh, um, yes, sir. I had my uh, my wife, who was actually in the academy at the time. She was. I went to uh, drop off a pair of um, tennis shoes so she could run PT, she forgot him that day. It was during lunchtime, so I took her to lunch and I brought her back to the academy. And is that violative of some JSO policy or procedure to have somebody else ride in your police cruiser? No, sir. Okay, so why were you disciplined for that? Uh, she was going through the academy at the time. Uh, we weren't married yet, we were, we were just dating, and I was asked not to go to the academy during that time. I don't know why I was asked, but I, I obliged. I said yes. Um, this happened a few days later. Um, and who told you not to go to the academy? Uh, it was Lieutenant Goff. Uh, at the, I believe he's Assistant Chief Goff now. And Lieutenant Goff, was he a supervisor of yours, or was he a supervisor of the academy? The academy supervisor, sir. to show you what will mark as plaintiff's exhibit A. Thank you, sir. Yep. 
you recognize or have you ever seen this document? Yes, sir. Okay. Now I want to turn your attention to the first page here. Mm -hmm. um, if you could, <coughs> the sentence that starts, or the paragraph that starts with on January 27th, do you mind just reading that for me? Yes, sir. <coughs> on January 27th, 2016, you posted the following. It's a Belio kind of night. Someone just learned a hard lesson about not showing their ass in Jacksonville. Three felonies, two misdemeanors, and an ass whooping to boot. LOL, I love my job. Okay. Is that one of the Facebook posts that we were that you were referring to it, earlier? It must have been, sir. Okay. <coughs> so do you recall making this Facebook post? Not really, sir, but I'm quite positive I wrote it. Okay. So you're not contesting that you wrote it? No, sir. Okay. What what is a Bolio? I'm sure it was probably Bolio, sir. Okay. And Bolio means battery on a law enforcement officer? Moving on to the to the next paragraph mm -hmm. there on February 5th. Do you mind reading that one for me, please? On uh, January 5th, 2016, you posted the following. Yep, it's that kind of night already. Someone's getting a size 13 boot in the ass tonight. I can feel it. Do you contest that you posted that on Facebook? No, sir. Okay. What did you mean... I understand the sentence generally um, by this. Was this a statement made? Were you talking about the kind of night? Were you on duty that night? I believe I probably was, sir. Okay. Couldn't tell you exactly, but I wouldn't post anything, you know, if I wasn't. Okay. Fair enough. So when you're talking about getting a size 13 boot, you're talking about within the course uh, are you as a police officer? I'm sure that it, it had some, it was just uh, tongue in cheek, sir. It was probably in a bad mood. Okay. And the 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 next one on February sixth, which been the next night. Um, just read that one for me, please. February sixth, two thousand sixteen. You posted the following: JSO, dirty deeds done dirt cheap. Okay. Now I'm familiar with the. ACDC song, Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap. Um, what did you mean by JSO, Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap? It's a song lyric, sir. Not the JSO part, right? No, sir. But I'm, I believe there's a picture attached to it that said the same. Okay. Yeah, what, 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 is, what does that lyric, that song lyric mean to you? Nothing really, sir. What is your understanding of what dirty deeds done dirt cheap means? Sir, it's a song lyric. I, I'm, I can't honestly tell you what, I what it meant to me six years ago, or four years ago, I'm sorry. Should, should JSO officers be doing dirty deeds? No, sir. Check the form. On the next, the next paragraph, please, if you would read that for me. On February 7th, 2016, you posted the following. How am I spending the Super Bowl sitting in the, sitting in the ghetto and making that off-duty dollar? Okay. Uh, that off-duty dollar, what, what did you mean by that? I was probably working 1060 off-duty work. Okay, what, what is 1060? Off-duty work. Okay. Uh, what what are some of the things that you would do off duty work or 1060? Um, I've sat at a bank uh, and stared at the wall and waited for the time to pass, make sure everybody was secure. I've walked the Jacksonville Landing to once again make sure people were secure. I worked at Publix um, and provided security and escorted people while they transported money. I've uh, worked at the hospitals. I've worked at construction sites. When you would go to the banks, mm -hmm. stare at the wall, <laughs> would you would you do that 
in your police cruiser? No, sir. Most banks, we had to be inside, sir. Okay. We had to be a presence inside the actual lobby of the bank. Would you ever use either your police vehicle or your police uniform while you were working off duty? Yes, sir. Okay. So how would that work? You're, you, if, if you were providing security off duty? Yes, sir. Who would be paying you to, to provide those services? The whoever, whatever company uh, hired us. Okay. Would you ever provide security at any bar? I don't remember if I've ever worked any bars. Okay. You said that you, you would walk the, walk the landing? Yes, sir. Okay. When you would walk the landing, would you be in your patrol uniform? Yes, sir. Okay. Would anybody else know that you were off duty at that time by looking at you? No, sir. What is the difference between being on duty and being off duty as far as your police authority, police power? There's no real difference as far as your police, police power, police authority. Um, the only difference between on duty and off duty is off duty you're working for that company as, as in, your complete, uh, in your police capacity. Uh, on duty you're answering calls for service and patrolling whatever zone or doing whatever task the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office tasks you with. Okay. So if you're working off duty, being paid by a private entity, for example, you you would still have the ability to rest up to arrest an individual? Yes, sir. How often would you work off duty? It depends, sir. I could work an entire off cycle, an entire four or five days I might work every day. Some days I or some off cycles I might work at all. Do have you have you ever made an arrest while you were working off duty? Um yes sir. How many times? I couldn't tell you exactly. I don't know how many people I've arrested. Do you remember an individual by the name of Daniel Nyman? Yes, sir. What do you recall about Mr. Nyman? Um, I was working off duty at uh, UF uh, downtown. Um, got a call just as I was about to go off shift that there was a battery at the lobby area, the main entrance of the uh, UF medical building. Um, showed up. As I was about to enter, uh, I saw two individuals arguing, yelling at each other. It was a male and a female. <coughs> I told them to disperse. He started cursing at me. I walked over to him. I told him that he had to leave, and he started screaming that he wasn't going to leave. Um, finally, he started to try, or started to comply and leave, but then refused to leave the, the grounds. Um, I went over to escort him, um, his arms came up, he got taken to the ground, he got put in handcuffs, and he got arrested. You said he was taken to the ground, would that be a, considered a use of force incident? Yes, sir. Did you do a report following this incident? Yes, sir. Okay. Even though you were off duty? Yes, sir. Off duty or on duty, doesn't matter, you have to do your report. Did you, did you, was that incident ever investigated? Yes, sir. Tell me about the investigation as you understand it. Investigation on? Into the Nyman incident. I, I'm, I'm trying to get a clarification investigated by who, sir? By myself, by the sheriff's office? The sher did the sheriff's office ever investigate your actions during the Nyman incident? Yes, sir. Okay. What did, did you, was there an internal affairs investigation opened up? As far as I remember, yes, sir. Okay, did you have to give a recorded statement? As far as I remember, yes, sir. Okay. 
do you recall the uh, disposition of that internal or internal affairs investigation? Um, the use of force was uh, dismissed. There was no excessive use of force. Um, I believe I did receive a level one counseling for uh, failing to comply to work standards, I think is, was the charge there. As you sit here today, do you know which standards that you failed to comply with? No, sir. Okay. Did they tell you what standards that you failed to comply with? That was three years ago, sir. I don't, I don't recall. Did they, it was three years ago, so this would have been 2017? Yes, sir. Okay. Did they send you for any remedial training following this incident? Not that I remember, sir. Have you ever been sent to remedial training? Uh, I was, let's see. I don't believe so, sir. No. Okay. And we may come back to more of this off-duty line uh, in the future, but I'll, we'll just continue. Let's get back to this, sir. If we could. Okay, uh, if you just read the next one starting on, on February 16th, 2016. <clears throat> on February 16th, 2016, you posted the following, working 1060 at a road construction site, and this is exactly what I was thinking. LOL. And just FYI, FYI, the police car with the lights on, and the cones in the barrels, and the large construction equipment in the middle of the road, if you ask me, can I go this way? I'm going to drag your ass out of the car, through the window, and monkey stomp you. Hashtag real talk. Okay. I have a general idea, but could you just, what, what do you mean by monkey stomp? What is that? Well, I'm assuming that I was asked several times to, uh, if they could go through the construction site, and I continuously had to tell them no, go around. Um, and once again, I believe it was just angry talk if there was any actual validity to any of these I'm sure that I would have been fired on the spot sir if there was any actual inappropriate contact sure you you called this angry talk is that just just for this deposition can we just say that generally these statements consist of angry talk probably sir probably a way to vent okay if you don't mind reading the next one for me. On March 14, 2016, you posted a picture. The picture depicted you standing outside of a driveway with an AR-15 in your right hand. It appeared to be a bottle of liquor in your left hand, standing in front of a grill. Okay. Now this, this angry talk, I, I imagine that police officers well, let me ask you, when going back to the construction site mm -hmm. comments that you made, I think that generally what you were saying is that you were getting frustrated that people were continuously asking to drive through the construction site. Is that fair? Sounds fair, sir. Okay. Is that common in police work where you, you encounter sort of the same issues repeatedly? Yes, sir. And, and does that generally make you frustrated or make officers frustrated when they have to deal with the same issue on repeat over and over and over? I can't speak for other officers, but I can say for myself, it could possibly be frustrating. Okay. Have, have you heard other JSO officers, without naming any names, just, have you heard other JSO officers engage in this type of angry talk? I don't speak with other officers very frequently, sir. When you were employed at JSO, did you ever hear any of the officers engage in this sort of this sort of rhetoric? Angry time. Not that I've been aware of. Were you disciplined for making these Facebook posts? Yes, sir. And what was that discipline? Uh, received written counseling that went into my file. I was told uh, to 
no longer make these posts and I no longer did. As you understand it, was the discipline, is, is it because you, you publicly made these posts or because you said those words? I, I don't know, sir. I know that it says it was a violation of the public, or the uh, social media policy. So this specific incident, I'm sure has to do with the fact that it was against the, pub, the social media policy. Okay. So, okay. So as you understand it, had you, had you not, had you made these comments somewhere other than the social media, would you have been disciplined for making these statements? No idea, sir. as plaintiff's exhibit B. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'll give it to Mr. Mark Tracker. Right. Do you recognize that document, sir? Yes, sir. Okay, and what is it? It's a uh, picture of Winnie the Pooh and Piglet, and it's got a Phrase from the movie Conan the Barbarian. Okay, what is that phrase? If you just read it for us. It says, what is best in life, Piglet, asked Piglet. Crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and hear the limitation of their women, replied Pooh. Okay, and was that posted on Facebook? Uh, yes, sir. What's the date that that was posted on Facebook? So it is March 1. Okay. I don't see a year on it. Okay, do you recall the year? No, sir. Was that made while you were employed with the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office? Yes, sir. Okay. What do you, was that referring to your employment or your work as a police officer? No, actually, I was, uh, I remember I was heading to the gym, so I was pretty ready to go lift some weights. Is that why you weren't punished or were not? Well, let me ask you, were you ever punished through the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office for making that post? I don't know about that specific post, but I know that, uh, like I said, I've made violation of that social media policy, and that was, it could have been one of those. So I don't know, sir. Okay. Now, I think you read the, the meme itself. Is there some, some language that you had typed as well? Yes, sir. Okay, can you read the language that you had typed, sir? It says, it's that kind of night with this kind of mood. Feeling my inner barbarian tearing its way out. Don't push your luck tonight because I'm about to snap. Okay. What do you mean by don't push your luck tonight? I was heading to the gym, sir. Okay, who was going to push your luck? I don't know, sir. So you're just making a general statement? Yes, sir. Show you what's what will be marked as plaintiffs. These are C. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that a post that you had made on your Facebook? I'm sure it is, sir. Okay. Can you tell me what, what you wrote there? It says, this isn't vengeance, it's punishment. Not in a good mood. Everyone might want to watch what they do or say around me. About to go off like a grenade. Okay. What do you mean, it's vengeance, it's not punishment? Or it's not, what is it, what was your is statement? It, this isn't vengeance, it's punishment. Okay, what does that mean to it's you? It's a line from the movie Punisher, sir, which is also what the, the picture is. Okay, so it's a quote from the movie. <laughs> Okay. All right. And the next thing, not in a good mood. Thank you. Everyone might want to watch uh, what they say 
or do, what they do or say around me about to go off like a grenade. Do you recall if this if this post was made during the time that you were employed with the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office? I don't know, sir. Okay. What do you mean I'm about to go off like a grenade? Could not tell you, sir. Okay. Have you ever gone off like a grenade? Not that I'm aware of, sir. Okay. I'm just trying to figure out what it means to you to go off like a grenade. I couldn't tell you, sir. I don't know. Okay. Does that mean to get aggressive with somebody? Is I that a fair way to I say it? I don't know, sir. Well, I mean, they're your words, are they not? Yes, sir, but I don't know what I was feeling at that time, and I don't know what the situation was, sir. So I, I cannot honestly tell you. This one as well. This one will be early on D note. Okay, thank you. It's a little Do you mind reading that? What you wrote there? <laughs> okay. I think it says listening to hate breed and limp biscuit. I'm sorry. Listening to hate breed and limp biscuit, which are two bands, man. Limp biscuits breaking stuff, which is a song. Feeling like ripping someone's head off, which is one of their lyrics. Luck. Luckily for the general public, I'm going to the gym to damage myself. You have to apologize. Uh, have to apologize. It's hard to decipher this. There are literally millions of people to fuck with right now. I'm one you might want to bypass. I can't make these out. I can't make out the last word, sir. Okay. If you don't mind. The last two are right now, though. Okay. What do you mean when you say, lucky for the general public, I'm going to the gym to damage myself? I was probably, I was heading to the gym, sir. Sure. Why would, why would... That'd be lucky for the general public that you're going to the gym. Going to the gym is therapeutic. So you're, you, you're saying that what you meant by this post is that the public benefits because the gym is therapeutic to you? Objective form. I'm just trying to understand what, you're, what you mean by that. Gym is therapeutic regardless of the situation I'm in, sir. Okay. So why would the general public be lucky that you go to the gym? Sir, I don't know. I'm, I'm assuming that I was probably having a rough day, and I was happy to be going to the gym. Oh yeah, that's right, that's what that, I, this last, this last sentence. Actually it looks better at this angle. Okay, can you read it now? Yeah. So what is that? Pure fucking Viking right now, sir. Okay. What do you mean by, by that phrase? Sir, I'm very proud to be Norwegian okay. and Viking descent. Okay. So I say that all the time. I say I, I'm I'm absolutely a Viking right now. Okay. So it's hard to see. Do you recall what this was a photograph of? Uh, I see a police officer. Uh, I don't know if that's a, ve a vehicle fire or building. On, it looks like a fire of some kind. 
Okay. This is the last place you want to be. I've already been. Okay. And it depicts a police officer in front of something. That's something hard. bad. Okay. Yes, sir. So taking in conjunction with with the with the photograph that's attached to your language, does that give you any better clarification of what you meant? Mean by lucky for the general public, I'm going to the gym to damage myself. No, sir. Okay. Do you do that in any way reference your employment with the Jacksonville Sheriff's Officer or your job as a police officer? No, sir. A lot of times I'll find a picture and I'll just attach it. Even though it has no relation to what you were talking Absolutely, about. Absolutely, sir. I don't want to ask you any questions. Yes, about sir. It, then that's fine. If you could. I don't even have any angle. Can I read that? Yeah, it's, it's in print out as know these Facebook posts here do you know if you were you were ever disciplined or reprimanded for making any of these posts I have no idea sir just for the record you're referring to playing this B through E yes sir thank you I apologize if I asked you this earlier, mm -hmm. but after you were reprimanded for making these posts, mm -hmm. the posts listed on plaintiff's A, did you undergo any additional training or were you provided with the general order that you were alleged to have violated by making these Facebook posts? The general order is right here at the bottom of this. I, yes, sir, I understand that, but I believe you said you hadn't seen this document before. Actually, that's not true. He said he had. Yes, oh, he had? Yes, okay. That's fine. I misunderstood. Okay. Are you, or were you, at the time that these Facebook posts made, friends with other officers on Facebook? As far as I know, yes, sir. Okay. And who had access to view your Facebook profile? It was public at the time. I have no idea, sir. Okay. Were you, do you know if you were Facebook friends with anybody associated with the police union? I don't remember, sir. Okay. You friends with Steve Zona? I am now, absolutely, yes, sir. Were you friends with Steve Zona at the time that you made these Facebook posts? I don't believe so, sir. When did you, when do you believe that you became friends with Steve Zona on Facebook? <clears throat> on Facebook, sometime in 2017, sir. I couldn't, couldn't tell you exactly. Were you friends with, were you Facebook friends with any of your supervisors on Facebook? I don't, I don't believe. 
believe so. Okay. And maybe this maybe this will help. I think I think you said that you were in zone. You were assigned to zone three. Yes, sir. How long did you stay in zone three? Um, until June of 2017. Okay. Where did you move in June of 2017? I was in um, Teleserve. Zone three, what is the, and forgive me because I'm not Yes, sir. Police officer, I'm not familiar with the inner workings of JSO. What what is what do you mean zone three? What does that mean? Zone three encompasses the area uh, pretty much from Beach Boulevard south, um, not including the downtown area. Anything from Phillips and Emerson, San Marco, South Side, Mandarin, that area of Jacksonville. Okay, and would would. Would, did Zone 3 have a supervisor or some officer that was in charge of Zone 3? Zone commander. Zone commander. Yes, sir. Okay. Who was the zone commander for Zone 3? Uh, it changed. Um, when I left, it was Matt Nemeth. Okay. Who was it when you arrived? <sighs> Chief Callan? I think, I, I believe it was Chief Cowan. I don't remember. Chief Cowan? Cowan. C-O-W-A-N. Thank you. Would you ever have meeting with, me, or meetings, zone meetings? Mm -hmm. How often would, this, would, would zone three have meetings? I don't remember ever having one. I don't know. Um, we would have roll call every day, and that was usually with your lieutenant and your sergeants. But I don't, I don't know about a zone wide. How many police officers would you say were in zone three? I don't have any idea, sir. Can you give me an approximation? Uh, three hundred, maybe, okay. maybe less. How many zones are in Jacksonville? Six. What is the hierarchy as as within the zone? How does that, what is the hierarchy? I imagine that police officers and then does it go to lieutenant or sergeant and then lieutenant? What is the hierarchy? Patrols, uh, patrol officers, um, police sergeants, police lieutenants, assistant chief. An assistant chief would be your zone commander. Okay. And I think this is an obvious question, but the different zones would have different zone commanders, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Do you know an officer, Vickery? I know of him, yes, sir. How do you know of Officer Vickery? He was assigned to Zone 3. Did you ever work with Officer Vickery? No, sir. Do you know an Officer Borishade? Yes, sir. And how do you know Officer Borishade? Just that he was in Zone 3 also. Just in passing, really. Were you in Zone 3 on or about April 27, 2016? Yes, sir. Okay. Was Officer Borisati and Officer Vickery also in Zone 3 at that time? I don't know, sir. I don't, didn't follow their career. Sure. Do you know an Officer Andres? No, sir. Do you, an, do you know an Officer Chastain? I know the name. I don't know him or her. I don't know that him or her. Following a use of force, would there ever be a, well, strike that. Let me ask you this. What, what would be discussed during the roll call? Um, if there's any um, 
any outstanding complaints like if there's high pedestrian traffic crossing such and such street you know start watching that area you know keep people safe from possible traffic uh, traffic crashes things like that um, could be if there's a property check that you need to do in your zone or your on your watch um, they'll put that out um, if there's any sort of traffic assignments or, or special details that need to be done and then uh, just go over things that happened over the previous shifts And who would be present during these roll calls? Um, all the patrol officers um, and the uh, police sergeant and possibly the lieutenant, depending on if he had something else you know, scheduled for that time or if he was free during that time. Do you recall who your police sergeant was for Zone 3? I had a couple of them, sir. Do you recall <laughs> who the police sergeant was back in April? 27th, 2016. 16. I can't remember if I was, I was at roughly around that time I'd switched from our blue to our gold, or I'm sorry, from gold to blue. So I, I don't know which watch I was on if I was on blue or gold. If I was on watch, or if I was on gold, I was uh, Brian Shore. And if I was on blue, it was off uh, Sergeant Katsakis. Please don't ask me to spell that. I might. I, I won't. She might. Um, you said that one of the things that you would talk about during the roll call is things that happened over previous shifts. Sir. Okay. Would if 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 a if an incident. A use of force incident had occurred on a previous shift. Would that be something that would have been discussed at these roll call meetings? I couldn't say so. Possibly, possibly not. All right. We've been going for a little over an hour now. If we could take a, a quick break, appreciate it. We are back on the record at 10:19. Okay, I want to back up a little bit. We talked about the Daniel Nyman incident earlier. Do you recall that? Yes, sir. Okay. Do you know uh, if a civil action was ever filed against the city in that case? I think so. Okay. Are you aware that the the city has paid a settlement to Mr. Nyman in the amount of $70,000? No, sir. Okay. We talked about a, an incident earlier where you were charged with simple battery. Yes, sir. Okay, and that was the incident that occurred at the gas station? Yes, sir. Okay. Is the does the name Elias Campos ring a bell? Yes, sir. Okay, was that the victim? Yes, sir. Okay. Alleged victim, sir. Sure. Are you aware that the city of Jacksonville has paid a settlement to Mr. Campos in the amount of $40,000? No, sir. Mr. Campos, uh, where was he when the alleged battery occurred? Uh, my patrol car, sir. In the, in the back of your patrol car? Yes, sir. Was he handcuffed at the time? Yes, sir. Are you trained, or do you recall from your training as with, through JSO, whether or not you are permitted to, to strike or punch a handcuffed Arrestee. It depends on the circumstances, sir. What 
what circumstance would warrant uh, the punching of a handcuffed arrestee? Check the form. It would absolutely have to do with the totality of circumstances, sir. What was the totality of the circumstances in the Elias Campos case uh, that would warrant uh, punching a handcuffed individual? Well, he wasn't punched, sir. Was he struck in any way? Yes, sir. How was he struck? He received one elbow strike, sir. Are you allowed to elbow strike an individual uh, who's handcuffed? He was, abs he was act actively physically resisting, attempting to kick me in the face. <clears throat> Is, have you ever used force on an, uh, any other arrestees who were handcuffed? No, sir. I'm just I'm trying to I'm trying to picture it in my head. Mr. Campos is in the back of a, a police car. You, you're saying that he was trying to kick you? Yes, sir. Is that right? As okay. I'm trying to get him into the vehicle. Okay. As you're trying to get him into the vehicle. Yes, sir. So he was out. He was not fully in the vehicle at the time. No, sir. Okay. Was he partially in the vehicle? Yes, sir. Okay. And he was handcuffed. Yes, sir. Okay. At what point did you strike? Uh, Mr. Campos. After he tried to kick me several times in the face, sir. Okay. Did he ever kick you in the face? No, sir. But I have a, well, I can't see it anymore because I have a tattoo over it, but I have a long scar along my uh, my forearm from his uh, foot, boot. I can't remember if he had a boot or a shoe. Okay. Other, than, other than Mr. Campos, you've never struck a, a handcuffed arrestee? No, sir. Okay. The, the, backing up, the course that you took at FSCJ, I believe you said it was the basic law enforcement? Yes, sir. Course? Who, did, were those professors were your teachers of those courses JSO officers? Yes, sir. Current JSO officers? Yes, sir. Okay. Did any, uh, did the basic law enforcement course at FSCJ consist of any, uh, any training or any officers outside of, of Jacksonville Sheriff's Office? Um, I don't remember, sir. Okay. I believe we might have had uh, an FDLE officer. I don't know. But is it fair to say that, mo that most of your training at FSCJ in the basic law enforcement course was taught by JSO officers? Yes, sir. Okay. And then obviously the, the training, once you became employed with JSO, was through JSO officers as yes, well? Yes, sir. Have you ever received any training, police police training, from anybody outside of the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office that you're aware of? Have I? Yes. No, sir. Are you involved in any other lawsuits against the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office that you're aware of? I don't know, sir. Is there a... Do, does the name John Blessing ring a bell? Yes, sir. Who is John Blessing? John Blessing was a man who was arrested uh, at the Jacksonville Arena uh, for battering a woman. Okay. And is there... Is there currently a lawsuit pending in regard to that incident that you're aware of? I don't know, sir. 
What about Blaine Land? Does that name sound familiar to you? Yes, sir. Who is Blaine Land? Blaine Land is a man who was struck by my vehicle while he was crossing uh, University Boulevard. What time? When did this event involving Blaine Land occur? In the evening, sir. Do you remember the date? Not the exact date. Do you know what year? Yes, sir, 2017. Is that the first time you'd have been involved in an incident? Uh, is the first time strike that? Is it the first time you um, were in a were in a crash while operating your patrol car? No, sir. How many times prior to the Blaine Land incident had you been in a crash involving your patrol car? I believe twice, sir. Okay. Do you mind describing both incidents for me? Yes, sir. I uh, I backed into a tree while I was trying to maneuver around other patrol cars at uh, roll call uh, and I, I struck a deer while I was driving my patrol car down uh, Bay Meadows Road. And the incident with Blaine Land, was Blaine Land a pedestrian? Yes sir. Do you know what happened to Mr. Land? Oh, uh, yes, sir. What he was died. that? He died on the scene. Do you know if there was an investigation into, uh, into this incident? Yes, sir. And what did that investigation, well, who conducted that investigation? Um, I don't know who the exact detective was. Uh, traffic homicide investigated it. And traffic homicide, is that a unit at, at JSL? Yes, sir. Were you interviewed following this incident? Yes, sir. Other than the interview, do you recall anything else that you had to do in regards to the traffic homicide investigation? Um, I was on, uh, they put me on leave for the remainder of the work cycle, and then I had to go see um, gosh, I don't even know the name of the place. Uh, psychiatrist's place. I had to go get uh, cleared for duty. Well, who told you you had to go to the psychiatrist to get cleared for duty? It's JSO policy. And what policy is that? I don't know the exact policy, sir, but if there's an incident uh, involving um, you know, like a shooting or, or a, a death or something like that. They, they make sure that uh, you're fit for duty before you go back. Okay. And they, uh, you said they put you on leave for the remainder of the work cycle. What is a work cycle? Um, we worked a 545-545 work cycle. Five on, five off, four on. Five on, four off, five on, five off, four on, five off. Okay. So. And is that for just zone three, or would that be all of these zones? All patrols, sir. All the patrols? Sir. So zones one through? Six. Six, okay. know if or did you ever had to have to give any sort of uh, blood samples or urine samples following this incident not that I recall do you recognize the name Trilby Smith no sir I think you said that your Facebook post was made available to the public, correct? Sir. Do you know if you were friends with Officer Borsati on Facebook? I don't believe so. Okay.
Were you a more senior officer than Officer Borsati? Yes, sir. Okay. Do you recall when Officer Borsati joined the police force? No, sir. Okay. How many, how long had you been on the police force? Or how many more years were you on the police force? Uh, then, we'll strike that. How long had you been on the police force when Officer Borsati became a police officer? I don't know when he became a police officer, sir. Okay. But you, but you were more senior to Officer Borshade? Yes, sir. Okay. Would Officer Borshade look up to you? I couldn't Correct. tell you, yes, sir. Officer Borshade testified that he saw you around the police academy. Why, if you're more senior to him, why would Officer Borashati have seen you around the police academy? Objective form. Like I said, my wife was going through. Was was he there during her time? I don't know. Okay, when you say your wife, your current my wife. My current wife, yes, sir. She was not your wife at no, the sir. time? Okay, was she your girlfriend at the time? Yes, sir. Okay, is that why you were at the police academy? Yes, sir. At some point, though, the police academy, or somebody in charge of the police academy informed you not to go to the police academy? Yes, sir. And do you know why? No, sir. So, you... She was going there, and I guess they didn't think it was appropriate for me to come around while she was in classes. And would you go around to the police academy while she, while your then-girlfriend? I would see her on breaks or during lunch, sir. Going back to the to the roll calls, would uh, do you I think you said the police officer, the police sergeant, the police officers, the police sergeant would be there, and if the police lieutenant was available, sometimes he would be at these roll calls. Is yes, that sir. Okay. So would every police officer in Zone Three who was working that shift be at the roll call? Um, unless something happened, they witnessed a crash or had a traffic stop on the way in, you know, then usually, yes, they're supposed to be a roll call. Okay. Okay. Do you recall being at the Sally Port on or about April 27th, 2016? No, sir. Awesome. We go off the record for a second. We go off the record at ten thirty-five. Okay, we are back in the record at ten thirty-seven. Okay. You're. How many How many years were you a JSO police officer? Uh, just under five, sir. Take it that you're familiar with the location of the pretrial detention facility? Yes, sir. And the Sally Port there? Yes, sir. Okay. I think I asked you this already, but do you recall being present on April 27, 2016? No, sir. Okay. I'm going to show you a video that we have from that day. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show it to you in, in its entirety, and I'm going to ask you some questions about it, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, very good. Can you? Tilt it a little bit. There's I'm a, sorry. All right, thank you, sir.
Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm sorry, but we will attach this video as well. What are we on, G? Ah, thank you. Okay, after seeing this video, does that refresh your memory of, of do, you, do you recall anything that you saw in the video? I'm just seeing it now, sir. Okay. You don't recall being present in the Sally Port when this incident occurred? I don't believe I was, sir. Okay. Do you recognize any of the officers in this video? Um, I don't know any of those officers. Okay. I'm going to show you we're bait stamped at 00678. Yes, sir. This gentleman right here mm -hmm. in the police uniform, the African-American male there. Sir. Do you know that individual's name? No, sir. I told you that was Officer Borshade. Okay. Okay. You, right. Would you agree with that? Sir. Okay. <clears throat> now, in this video... Miss Miss Martinez is handcuffed, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. That's if that's who that is. Yes, sir. Okay. Right there. Now you've seen the video in its entirety. Yes, sir. I think that you said earlier that based on your understanding of your training, that on based on the totality of the circumstances, sometimes it's okay to punch a handcuffed individual. After seeing this video, and based on your understanding of how you were trained, would you say that the amount of force used by Officer Borisati was appropriate under the totality of the circumstances of this video? I don't believe I'm an expert in use of force, but I, I, I don't know what happened. I don't know what she said. I don't know. It looked like she kicked at him twice. I, I don't. I, it's not for me to say what's appropriate or not. Sure. But you did go through the same training as Officer Borshadi, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Is, is what Officer Borshadi did consistent with your training? I don't know, sir. I, I, like I said, I can only answer for myself. I don't know what happened prior. I don't know what was said. I don't. There's no audio to that video. I can't see if he made contact the first time. I can't see if she's, her, she's tensing her muscles. She's still resisting. I can't see if, what she's doing. I can see, all I can see is this, the, the hands are moving, sir. Do you recall ever discussing this incident involving Officer Borshade at any roll calls? I can't say so, sir, no. Would it would it surprise you if I told you that Officer Borshadi was arrested for? No, sir. I, I've, I have heard the news that he was, you know, the news reports that he was arrested, but I don't, I didn't get into, I don't like to watch the news, and I don't like to get into the details of things that don't involve me. Sure. So even knowing that Officer Borshadi was arrested for this incident, you're still unsure whether or not it's consistent, these actions were consistent with the training or not? No, sir. Who arrested Officer Borshadi? I don't know. Jacksonville Sheriff's Office? I would assume so, yes, sir. The same office that trained both you and Officer Borshadi? Yes, sir. So you don't recall being present at the Sally Port on this day when this event occurred? No, sir. Okay, so you wouldn't have remembered anything or heard anything or seen anything about this incident other than the video I just showed you? Yes, sir. Okay. Did you ever talk to Officer Borshadi about this incident? No, sir. Okay. Did you ever talk to um, Officer Andres or Officer Chastain about this incident? No, sir. Have you ever talked with Officer Vickery about any incident involving Ms. Martinez? No, sir. Are you aware that prior to this incident, Ms. Martinez was, uh, or Officer Borshadi had used another use of force against Ms. Martinez at a uh, parking lot of scores? No, sir. I, I didn't know that.
Have you ever had your authority as a police officer rescinded? Check the form. What does that mean? Show you what it's marked as plaintiff's exhibit G. So you recognize this document? Yes, sir. Okay. And you, have you been provided this document before? Yes, sir. Okay. Can you read me the uh, this this paragraph, the second paragraph there? Yes, sir. Can okay. we, before we do that, it's for clarification, because I know this is going to confuse the record. Yep. What you're referring to is within the packet, which was referred to as Exhibit A. Okay. I'll pull that out. Okay. I'll, I'll pull that. Let's let's okay. do that right now, actually. Thank you. I'll pull this out, and then we'll, we'll keep, it, keep it clean. I got this. Two pages here. Just the first one. And the second one. Mm -hmm. So if you would, please read the second paragraph for me. Right. Effective immediately, March 20, uh, 20, 2016, your law enforcement authority granted by the agency is rescinded. You are not to use any of your police powers nor wear the police uniform. You're prohibited from, use, from using driving city of Jacksonville vehicles or possessing any firearms issued by the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. Any permissions, authority, the authorizations, for secondary employment are also rescinded to include duties performed as a courtesy officer. You're also prohibited from possessing a firearm while on any property affiliated with Jacksonville Sheriff's Office and you must adhere to all laws concerning firearms possessions by a private citizen. These conditions will remain in effect until further notice. So you recall receiving this, this document? Yes, sir. Okay, do you remember how long your your Law enforcement authority was rescinded. Uh, roughly about three or four weeks. During the time that your authority was rescinded, were you able to go to work? What What were you? Um, what did you do at that point? I was transferred to the teleserve unit. Okay, and I think that that you mentioned that word earlier, teleserve. Mm -hmm. What yes, is sir. What is teleserve? Um, you basically people who are unable to perform their police duties. Who are still actively employed? Uh, they sit in an office. They answer phone calls for service um, that can be handled over the phone, not have to be handled in person. So, like theft of license plate, um, theft of you know, decal, uh, loss of IDs, things of that that nature. And how long were you in the teleserve? Like I said, roughly about three or four weeks. Is it once your authority was no longer rescinded, were you able to go back to being a patrolman? Yes, sir. Okay. And then transferred back out of the teleserve yes, at that point? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, the date on this letter uh, says March 20th, 2016. Yes, sir. Is this a result of the, uh, the internal affairs investigation into the Facebook post that we talked about in, in Exhibit A? No, sir. What was this in regards to? Um, I believe that the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office has 
a what they call an early warning uh, system. If you have X amount of you know use of force or um, complaints or whatnot, they they check to make sure that you're not you, know, you don't have any sort of issues. Okay. Do you recall how many use of force or other incidents you had um, prior to receiving this transfer? I don't. I don't know, sir. Three. And so, if I understand, I want to be clear on your testimony here. There's a running tab of complaints or use of force incidents that you that you may engage in that JSO would keep. Is that correct? They they keep track of all that. Okay, and if you get to a certain number or a certain amount, then you'd be transferred into the Telesar? Not necessarily. They, 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 they would flag you as an individual, and they would monitor you. Okay. So if they, they I guess it's the easiest way to say it is they just want to make sure that you're not, you're not a threat to, to yourself, not a threat to the public. So they want to check you out. They're they're very proactive in handling their police officers. Other than transferring transferring you to Teleserve, what did they do to make sure that you were not a threat to the public? Well, I had to, as far as I remember, because this was 2016, I had to go um, for a psychological evaluation. How many psychological evaluations have you undergone as a police officer with JSO? Uh, two other ones. The one after the crash and then this one here. So two total? Well, three total. We had to, you have to go to one before you enter the police academy. So. Okay. And who, who were these psychological evaluations done through? I don't remember the company or the, the, the doctor's name, sir. So the one was during the police academy. The other one was during this time where you had your authority rescinded. Yes, sir. And the third time was after the traffic crash. Sir. Traffic crash involving Blaine Land. Yes, sir. Show you what we marked as plaintiff's exhibit H. Okay. And that was taken out of it was. Yes, okay. Do you recognize uh, that document, sir? Mm -hmm. I'd have to read it first, sir. Concise one, yes, sir. Okay. Are those the lists? of the the incidents or um, is that sort of the blog that JSO kept about incidents involving you? Yes, sir. Okay. And is it the number of incidents or or, or the number of listings on that page that would trigger the the, the recension of your authority? I don't know, sir. Okay. I don't know how that system works. I just this is all what I've been told. Okay. So I, I don't I don't know how the system actually works. <coughs> That's fine. All right, I'll take that. Okay. Thank you. It says here um, charge chargeable traffic crash sustained December twenty second, two thousand and fourteen. It says points assessed one informal counseling and remedial training. Which traffic crash is that referring to? That would be the 2014 would have to be when I backed into the, uh, the tree. And it said remedial training. Do you recall having undergoing remedial training with that? As far as I know, I don't remember going, but I would have to have gone. 
The second one here, it says the allegations or failure to conform to work standard sustained October 24th, 2015. Do you recall what incident this refers to? No, sir. Okay. Do you recall receiving any formal counseling as a result of, of these? I don't recall, sir. That that it, that was it was a form of an in-house complaint uh, received on June tenth, two thousand and fifteen. Does that refresh your recollection at all? No, sir. Okay. The third one here it says it was an in-house complaint, IA number fifteen dash zero zero five nine eight, received August twenty eighth, two thousand and fifteen. The allegations were failure to be wholly candid which was sustained on December 3rd, 2015, and failure to obey an order sustained on December 3rd, 2015 as well. Yes, sir. Do you recall that incident? Uh, that was when I was going to the police academy to see my, who is now my wife. So it says here, failure to obey an order. Were you, were you reprimanded or were you well, were you reprimanded because you went to the academy or because you failed to obey an order to stay away from the academy? Both, sir. It says here, actions taken December 14, 2015, written reprimand two. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? It is a level two written reprimand. Okay. How many levels of written reprimands are there? There's level one and level two. What What is a level one reprimand? Um, as far as I'm, I should be really scraping the barrel here for my memory on this. Okay. Do you recall ever receiving a level one written reprimand? Yes, sir. I've, I've received a level one. Okay. What Do you remember what that was for? I got one here for his failure to comply to work standards or conform to work standards. Okay. And it says, in addition to failure to obey an order, it also says failure to be wholly candid. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what you were, what you failed to be wholly candid about? Gosh. I remember when I was asked initially what you know my memory is not the greatest of these instances sir I was asked not to go to the Academy I believe they asked gosh did they ask me they asked me a question and I was kind of stumped as to why they were asking me that so I didn't answer right away. I can't remember the questioning, sir. Okay. Okay. Um, on page two, uh, in-house complaint received March 19, 2016. Allegations failure con to conform to work standards sustained on March 19, 2016. Mm -hmm. Written reprimand number one. Do you recall what that incident refers to? No, sir. There's not a lot of detail on these. I don't know. Right. Do you did you keep a copy of your written reprimand? I had I had copies. I don't have any of that anymore. Okay. And it looks like there was another uh, two incidents listed here: an in-house complaint received March twenty-first, two thousand and sixteen, and the allegations. All it says is open investigation. Do you recall what incident that's referring to? No, sir. Same thing for the next one, uh, a citizen complaint that was received on April 14, 2016. No, sir. When did the Elias Campos incident occur? June 2017, as I said before. Police officer, what are what are some of the ways that police officers would communicate with other police officers? 
is there any, like, what is the mobile dispatch? Um, we can send messages over our MDC, over our laptops and our computer. Okay. Um, we can call them over the radio. Um, you can, if you have their number, you can text them or you can call them. What about uh, email? Are you guys given an email? Yes, sir. Is every officer, as you understand it, is every officer at JSO provided a JSO email? Yes, sir. Okay. And officers can communicate back and forth that way? Yes, sir. Would it be common following a, a use of force incident for officers involved to exchange emails or communications back and forth like that? I couldn't tell you. Have you, following any, any use of force incident, used email or the mobile mobile dispatch to communicate with another officer about how to write a report i've communicated with other officers on how to write reports but as far as use of you know response resistance reports no sir okay is there any sort of um as you as you know it is there any sort of rule against a witness to an officer's use of force communicating with the officer who actually applied the force uh, prior to writing their report. I don't know, sir. The crash involving Blaine Land, I'm sorry, what, do you recall when that occurred? May of 2017. And the incident involving Mr. Campos mm -hmm. was also in 2017? Yes, sir. What month? June. June. How long after the incident involving Blaine Land did you go to psyche or, or see the psychiatrist? Within a few days, sir. So following the land incident, you went to a psychiatrist and on the day that the psychiatrist clear you to go back to work? Yes, sir. And then the following month is when the Campos incident occurred? Yes, sir. Did you have to go back for a psychological evaluation following the Campos incident? No, sir. Were you arrested following the Campos incident? Yes, sir. Sorry? Yes, sir. How long after you were arrested did your employment with JSO cease? Um, in August of 2018. Were you able to... Were you able to continue on as a, as a police officer following the incident involving Mr. Campos? I worked in the teleserve office, yes, sir. I didn't have arrest authorities or police patrol authority. Apologize for that. At the time that you were transferred into teleserve following the Elias Campos incident, Were criminal charges pending against you? Yes, sir. Were you placed on a, on, a, on any sort of leave? I went on leave. I wasn't placed on leave, sir. So during the pendency of the criminal case against you, you were transferred into Telesur? Yes, sir. How long did you work in Telesur after the Campos incident? 13 months, 14 months, sir. And just to be clear, Teleserve is still part of the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, correct? Yes, sir. And you were arrested by the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office following the Campos incident? Yes, sir. After that stint of, of 13 to 14 months of working in the Teleserve following the Campos incident, were you ever a police officer again? No, sir. They let you go back, or did they let you work in Telesurf without undergoing a psychological evaluation? Yes, sir.
Were you part of the police union? Yes, sir. How long had you been a member of the police union? Uh, the entire time I was with the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. Do you know who Steve Zona is? I do, sir. And who is that? He's the president of the police union. Let me turn this down. I'm, I'm apologizing. Have you ever spoke with Steve <coughs> Zona about any particular incident that you've been involved in? Uh, yes, sir. Which incidents? Um, the the traffic crash and the campus incident, but we didn't go into detail. What did you talk with Mr. Zona about with the uh, Elias Campos incident? Uh, he just gave me general um, general counsel and pretty much keep your head up. He's trying to keep me positive. How long after the incident did this? Did you speak with Mr. Zona about this? Um, a few days. Actually, I spoke with Steve Zona briefly those, both those days, and then we spoke again several days later. Sorry. Did Mr. Zona reach out to you? No, I reached out to him. Okay. Why did you reach out to Mr. Zona? Why not? He's, he's my representative, sir. Is he a lawyer? No, sir. Okay, so when you say representative, what do you mean he's your he's representative? He's the head of the police union. Okay. Did he, did he retain a lawyer for you for those criminal charges? Yes, sir. Who was that lawyer? Um, Phil Vogelful. Can you spell that for me? Vogelsang. Please don't tell me. I messed up his name. Has the union, is this the only time that the police union has provided you counsel? As far as I remember, yes, sir. Okay, have you ever been sued civilly? Just with the Jack, these incidences with Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. Okay. Did the police union provide you a civil defense attorney? Yes, sir. And would those be for the, which, which instances are we referring to? Uh, as far as I know, the John Blessing, the Nyman, the Land, and the Campos. Blessing, Land, Campos, and was there another one in there? Nyman, sir. Nyman. And who was the civil defense attorney that the police union retained on your behalf in those civil cases? Um, well, we got Paul and we got uh, Phil. Are you aware that Mr. Derek Chatty represents uh, the defendant Borshade in this case? I am now, yes, sir. Did you? speak with Mr. Derek Chotty before this deposition? Yes, sir. What did you guys discuss before this deposition? Reject the form. You don't have to answer that. Does Mr. Derek Chotty represent you as a witness in this civil case? No, sir. Do you consider Mr. Derek Chotty your attorney for who represents you during this deposition? No, sir. Did you and Mr. Derek Chai discuss any matter that we've discussed during the course of this deposition prior to this deposition? It's up to you whether or not you want to answer it. I'm not going to answer it. When did you and Mr. Derek Chai? Uh, discuss this incident prior to this deposition? I believe that was uh, Tuesday, the 14th. No, Monday the 13th. 
Is that via telephone call? No, sir. It's face to face? Yes, sir. How long did this meeting last? 10, 20 minutes. Mr. Derek Shotty provides you any documentation or photographs or any evidence related to this case during this meeting? No, sir. Did Mr. Derek Shotty inform you at the time of this meeting that he was representing the defendant in this case? Yes, sir. You said you're currently employed with the Air National Guard? Sir. Yes, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. Prior to working at the Air National Guard, you worked for Johnson & Johnson? Yes, sir. Why did you leave Johnson & Johnson? It, it was very, very monotonous and boring, sir. It's not my cup of tea. Were you ever disciplined at Johnson & Johnson? No, sir. Do you ever have any physical altercations with anybody while working at Johnson & Johnson? No, sir. Is there a difference between having your authority rescinded and being suspended? As far as I know, yes, sir. Okay. So we've talked about your authority being rescinded at least on March 20th, 2016. Yes, sir. As you're to the best of your knowledge, at, at any other time while employed at JSO, was your authority rescinded? No, sir. Okay. Have you ever been suspended from the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office? Yes, sir. It was in the, in the file. Okay. How many times have you been suspended? Uh, as far as I remember, just the once. And it was for 10 days and was in that concise file. Okay. Th this one? That one, yes, sir. Okay. I think this, I'm showing you exhibit G, I believe. H, H. sorry, H. Okay, that's the, so the 10 day suspension listed here, which came uh, following the failure to obey order and failure to be candid surrounding your, your showing up at the police, aca yes, police academy. Okay. Other than that, you've never been suspended that you can recall. Not that I remember, no sir. So you, you weren't suspended following the Blaine Land incident? No, sir. You weren't suspended following the Campos incident? No, sir. I was placed in Telesurf. Okay. And you weren't suspended following the Nyman incident, is that correct? No, sir. Is that no, you were not suspended? No, I was not, no, sir. you plan on returning to the to to be a police officer one day? I haven't decided yet, sir. As part of your settlement, oh I'm sorry, as part of it was as part of the resolution of the criminal charges against you following the Campos incident. Yes sir. Was a condition that you not be a police officer at JSO ever again? No sir. Okay, what was the conditions? Um, the only the only stipulation they asked that I don't seek employment in the fourth judicial circuit for the for the three years. For three uh, years? Yes, sir. Okay. So after the three years you're welcome or you as as far as you understand it, you're allowed to apply in the fourth judicial circuit, which would include JSO? Yes, sir. I can apply. Okay. Doesn't guarantee it would take me back, but I can apply. You 
mentioned that you have five children. Are all five of the children uh, with your current wife? No, sir. Objective form. There's no reason to, to get into all that. Okay. That's, I'll withdraw that. That's fine. Thank you. 